been using the comic medium to tell stories. It wasn't something that I ever had to think about. I think it was just because I grew up reading webcomics and laughing at things online. The one, one that I remember really clearly was Cyanide and Happiness. I used to go on the website and read pages and pages of it when I was way too young to even understand half of the jokes. Looking through old sketchbooks, I was always using the panel format to tell stupid jokes and stories and it just kind of came out of that. I always used to draw but I never took art during high school or anything because I never thought I was good enough but then when I graduated I ended up going to uni to do design and did design and animation and that's when I started to kind of take it seriously and thought well may as well give it a shot and I've been drawing professionally ever since. I think that I've made upwards of 400 comics according to my Google Drive. <laughs> Some of them unfinished as well, but it's a lot. The humour in my comic strips comes from literally the most strangest of places. Like, I've got this list on my phone that I will write things in, just thoughts, right? It's like, it's like so long that I have to go through it and it's just random thoughts that I have on my walk to work. I've got things on there that don't even make sense to me. Things that like I will wake up in the middle of the night and having like a, the most funniest dream that I've ever had and I'll just write down something in my phone and then I wake up and I, it, it doesn't make any sense at all. So yeah, it's just um, random thoughts that I have. Sometimes conversations with friends. I think another thing that kind of comes into my comics quite often is the character of the void. I never expected drawing the void that it would have such an impact on a lot of people, but pretty much the void is just a character I've made that helps me rationalize my thoughts. And they're very specific thoughts. They're very, like, I wouldn't, I never would have thought they're relatable or um, other people could find comfort in them. They're just something that gets a thought out of my head. So many people have come to me and been like, wow, I really like how honest your work is and I never thought that anyone else was feeling this way. And I guess I'm proud of it because I haven't seen any other artist online do it a whole lot. To be that vulnerable and to be that open and to come up with these thoughts that seem that they wouldn't be relatable, but so many people come forward and say that they are. I, I'm really proud of that. With The Void, I have plans to create an uh, anthology of all the comics I've made, and it's looking at them. I had a look at the first one that I did and the one that I did the other day. Where those comics began, where they are now, completely different places. Um, I think it's gonna be cool to see the progression, um, the chronological progression, but also, it's kind of embarrassing putting something that you drew like four years ago <laughs> onto the same uh, book that you drew something last week into because the style has changed dramatically and it looks so disjointed, but it's going to be cool, I reckon. Style is such a problem that I have with being an artist because I don't like to confine myself to one style. I like to mix it up. I like to try different things. Otherwise, I just get, I feel like I'm making art for the sake of my brand, not for the sake of my own wanting to make art. Painting has become so meditative for me. I love just sitting outside with my paints and just spending a couple of hours not thinking of anything except what's going into the page. And it's the same with life drawing. I try to go every week to life drawing as well and it's just the most healthy thing for me as someone who overthinks constantly and just spirals out of control all the time to just have to sit down look at something for two hours and just draw it. And I always come out of these stages just feeling so much better about myself, about the world. It's just so calming for me. Now that I've made a name for myself online, um, I do feel the pressure to keep making webcomics because otherwise the relevancy just drops off like that. Like, you know, I make comics for Instagram. If you don't upload something at least once a week, and I mean at least, you'll lose followers, you'll lose traction. So I feel that makes me need to produce things and put them out on, online. And they could be pieces of crap, but otherwise I lose everything pretty much. But that's a bit depressing. Like my, my main reason that keeps me going is because I like doing it. Um, I think that having the motivation from social media to push you to do things is good and bad. It's a double-edged sword because on the one hand it, it does drain you and make you feel like you need to and puts this unneeded pressure on that, but you still create things. Instagram started off as a thing to make me do things, right? Like, I would not 
be creating things every day if I didn't have that pressure. I'm going to be hosting my own solo exhibition, which is something that I've been wanting to do for ages, but of course, um, Last year, the end of the world happened and that kind of puts things on hold a little bit. But yeah, um, early June is when I'm planning to have it. Um, I'm gonna have pretty much everything that I've been working on up until this point. I wanna have all of my sketchbooks that I've kept for the past couple of years. I want it to show that you can come from nothing, literally nothing. I was a nobody and now I have 75,000 followers on Instagram and that's over the space of a couple of years. Um, and I didn't have a whole lot of resources. I didn't have a whole lot of talent, I don't think. Um, but I got there and anyone can. And it's important to show that you can do that. Otherwise people are gonna look and be like me when I was like, I'm never gonna have that talent. I'm never gonna be as good as this person. You just have to work on your own stuff. These days, you're just constantly comparing to other art that you see. And it's so much of it online. Um, by so many people that you never think that you could ever be the best at it. But it wasn't until I really had the revelation, I guess, that you don't have to be the best at it to be an artist. And if you just put what you want on the page and your own thoughts, it's always going to be unique to you. And people might like it, they might not. That's not really the point of art.